my name is Jen Briney, and I'm the biggest nerd you've ever met because I host a podcast called Congressional Dish. Hey all, Amanda here, and welcome to episode 89 of Great Beer Adventure. Last week, we were in Rhode Island talking to Sean from Revival. This week, we are headed to Orlando. If you have been here for any amount of time, you know that we absolutely must start by talking about Disney. Let's jump right in. Hey, everybody. I... I'm in Orlando, Florida. I am at the Carib Royale, and I am sitting at a table with sun shining in my face, and I am completely okay with that because I'm in Orlando, Florida, and it is still cold and ridiculous back home in Maine. I'm down here for a podcast conference, and Jen Briney is here with me. Hello, Jen. Hello. And we are drinking beers and talking into mics. I should have probably named my show that. Yeah. Right? But you're living the dream. So what does it matter what the show it is called? It doesn't even matter. <laughs> I drink beers and talk into a mic. Boom, I'm, I'm ready to go. That's it. <laughs> um, so before we get started, I would love it if you could actually tell my audience it's just a little bit about yourself so they can kind of get to know you before we jump into this episode. Okay. Well, my name is Jen Briney, and I'm the biggest nerd you've ever met because I host a podcast called Congressional Dish, where I watch congressional hearings and I read congressional bills and I tell you what's in them from the perspective of someone who hates all political parties and just wants to know what they're doing to me so I can prepare myself for, you know, Armageddon (laughs) or whatever is coming. Um, That might actually be what's happening, but (laughs) we're not going to get political on this show. No, we're not getting political today, but that's what I do. But um, I do have a lot more interests, and um, I'm married to someone who brews beer in our kitchen, makes my whole house smell like barley. Which is a great thing. Well, if you like the smell of barley. <laughs> if you don't and you're me, then he brews when I leave and then he has to air it out. And actually, I have a rule where if it smells like barley, he has to cook some bacon to mask it. So we actually do this. Yeah. Right and before we jumped on, you were telling me that you like big plates of bacon. I have a bacon problem. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Now, yeah. I, have a, I, I have a very serious question. Beer that's flavored like bacon, good or bad? Like the smoky beer. I haven't had it yet, but I'm intrigued. I've had Bloody Marys with bacon in it, and I always enjoy it. I've had bacon-infused vodka, which is better than you'd think. But I haven't had beer that tastes like bacon. Yeah, so there's um, this type of beer out there that has a very smoky flavor to it. And for me, I really enjoy bacon, and I really enjoy beer, but I don't like drinking bacon. So I have yet to find a smoked beer uh, Roush beers, uh, those are some smoky ones. Or anytime you see smoked beer, that's going to be some variation okay. of like slightly smoky to an entire slab of bacon. Like somewhere in the, the, the middle. Is this the type of thing that you can BevMo and find? Or is it Maybe. more difficult? Is this like an online get it shipped to you kind of beer? Oh, no, no, no. A lot of breweries make them. Really? Yeah. You've just changed my life. That's what we do here. The show's <laughs> over, folks. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's not. That's just kidding. Let's quickly talk about uh, the beers that we are drinking. I, Before we jump into that, I had a funky Buddha last night. They have them at this little 24-hour market in our hotel, and that's fabulous. But we're not drinking those today. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a <laughs> Sam Adams. I think she said it was like a hoptastic or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we're at this. We wanted to go to the bar with the more interesting beers, but it's not open yet, and it's happy hour. So I don't know what's going on I don't here. Know. I no. think the East Coast just does things later. Um, so well, well, not Maine. <laughs> Maybe just Florida. They're, they're Florida. Little, they just go a little bit slower. Maine, we're like, oh, look, it's breakfast time. Let's have some beer. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style up there in Maine. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm super basic. I'm drinking a Corona because um, I said this when I ordered, but... It just feels so tropical here. It just feels like a Corona commercial. Like, I should be by the pool with a commercial with no shoes on. And There you go. And right? I don't have shoes on, so it just seems perfect. Yeah. And it's fitting my mood. See, and I'm, I'm really all about, like, every beer has its place. And this is probably one of the best places for Corona other than Mexico. Totally. I can right? see the palm trees. 
It's actually got a bit of a Mexico resort vibe to it here. Yeah. There's a weird waterfall, and yeah, I just... It's a corona kind of day. It, it, it certainly is. It's been a very busy day here at Podcast Conference Central. Um, <laughs> and I am so ready to be bearing and talking into a microphone. Uh, so we're going to continue drinking these beers. But we're also going to talk about two of my favorite things all together in one awesomeness. So all of you listeners probably know that I am a gigantic Disney nerd and I already told you we're in Orlando so you best know that I have within two hours of landing I got myself on Disney property (laughs) (laughs) I was like I went to the Polynesian and I had some drinks there then I rode on the monorail and you know then I was back at Disney Springs the next morning. I woke up at like 5.45 and I'm like, I'm going to Uber over to Disney Springs. And they don't even open till 10, but I'm like, I just want to walk around. Disney Springs, is that the new one that it's like the shops, kind of like yeah. downtown Disney, but a different vibe? Is that? Yeah, they just changed the vibe slightly. Okay. It's the same place, but just a little shift. So they have a downtown Disney here and a Disney no. Springs? Downtown Disney is now Disney Springs. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. explains things. Because we are thinking of going to Disney Springs. Yeah. I was like, I told her before, I was like, I'm going to skip downtown Disney because I'm from Southern California. But like, no, I'm not. No, no apparently I'm going. <laughs> Actually, I'll be there at 545 tomorrow morning too. <laughs> um, so I reached out to people. I'm like, there has got to be somebody that loves Disney and loves beer as much as me going to this podcast conference because why wouldn't there be? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Disney parks are too much fun. Yes. So someone has to love them. And you found the right person. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you are on the West Coast. So Disneyland mm-hmm. is your yes. home turf. Yes. Because I was raised in Orange County, California, about 15 minutes from Disneyland. But my dad was an executive at actually a competing amusement park. Um, he was an executive at Knott's Berry Farm. I've been there. Okay. So yeah. you know that they're a couple miles away from each other. Um, Don't Knott's they have the biggest wooden roller brother. coaster? They do. Yes, and it's one of my favorite roller coasters. Yeah. It's uh, it's surprisingly smooth for being made out of wood. But yeah, so Knott's Berry Farm was like the little brother to you know the big the big dog next door, which is Disneyland. But because he was an executive, we got to go to all of the the parks in the area for free. So Magic Mountain, Disneyland, all those. And so we spent a ton of time at Disneyland when I was a kid. And then he left that job for reasons I'll never forgive him for. <laughs> and then and then I had friends that used to work there. So when you're a teenager in Orange County. You know all kinds of people, and what people don't know is that they can sign in their friends, actually quite often. And I had, I had like five friends at one time, so I hadn't paid for Disneyland. I think I've paid once in my 34 years of existence, but I've been hundreds of times. And um, it's one of my favorite places in the world, and I'm glad that you brought up drinking because it was like this whole thing that we tried to do to like sneak it in and then... You know, they, oh, and then it became possible to drink at California Adventure, which was a huge deal. And yeah, so it was a huge part of my childhood. It's still one of my favorite places and giant nerd for it. Yeah, I am too. My dad, he would work, um, my dad and my mom would work nearly every day for like two, a year or two and save up all the money. And we would, it really feels like Disney is my Mecca and we would make our p- pilgrimage every couple of years down nice. to Disney. Um for, for me, at the tail end of my childhood, I really took it for granted. And I was just like, why can't we just go camping? Because they're working all the time to be able to pay for this. And I'm like, well, if we just went camping, we'd be able to actually see you. But now that I'm an adult, the the magic is so, like, in my blood. Yeah. Um, that it is absolutely, um, like... I have this pull. We used to, we, February is when we went. And so mm. I, I have this pull of, I need to be on a plane going to Florida. Like, yeah. the physical feeling. So it's well, kind that's of, a great time for you to go from Maine to Florida. Yes. So I can feel, <laughs> I can tell why you can not only feel the Disney magic, but just like, Give oh my God, out. it's so warm. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great way to make someone love Disney. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dead of winter. Yep. Take them someplace warm. Mm-hmm. Um, it was amazing. Um, and now my husband and I actually got married in 2008, and we honeymooned for part of our honeymoon at Disney World. Oh, and how so, fun. Yeah, it was great. They give you, like, these buttons, and we had our, like, Mickey and Minnie ears on. And, like, 
he would just like came up and like gave us money and was like, "Here, I can't buy you a drink, but have like go buy yourselves one," kind of thing on Main Street. Wow. Yeah, it That's was amazing. It was amazing, and like cast members were like giving us free cupcakes and cookies, and I think we got a couple Sam Adam beers for free in the America Pavilion in Epcot. But what we did one of the days was we drank around Epcot. That's what we're doing on Monday. <laughs> there you go. And I've never been to Epcot, so I'm really excited. Right. So, yeah. Um, I didn't realize I didn't realize that you could drink so much more in Florida in their Disney parks. Because yeah. in California, it's really not a thing. It's just with California Adventure, and even then, it's still kind of a secret. Oh, know? really? Yeah. Like, there's one spot where you can drink some wine, and I think you can get beer ne- there now, too. But it's really underground. Oh, and then there's the secret club in Disneyland. I but it's so expensive to get in there. Go there. Me too. It's it's like a dream, but yeah, the line and the money and I've been too broke to to do it. But podcast it's, life. Well, and the thing is too, my husband's from Portland, so he doesn't quite get like if he were to go there, I don't think he'd appreciate just how special it is, right? You know, and um. So, honestly, I don't think I'd want to go with him. I'd want to go with <laughs> another Orange County nerd um, or just someone who gets it, you know, because right. there's this whole culture to yeah. it that he thinks it's so weird how much I like it. And that, like, podcast movement's going to be in Anaheim. Yes. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to Disneyland. He's like, why? You've been a hundred times. You know what's there. And I'm like, that's not the point. I want to be transformed back in, being into, like, six years old. Right. But while drinking. Exactly. <laughs> like, it, it becomes this whole other thing. And now here, Epcot, definitely, like, people know all about drinking. Animal Kingdom, um, they have regular bars and restaurants and stuff in there. MGM, it feels a little bit more underground. It's not even MGM anymore. That was like, I'm yeah, dating I've myself. Yeah, never heard of that. D- uh, down, no, uh, Hollywood Studios. When I... Oh. We, we, uh, Universal it, Studio? No, nope, no. Nope. Hollywood. Oh, they have a Hollywood thing right outside of Epcot, right? Is that what you're talking about? Well, it, it, I don't know its technical name right now because okay. they're in the process of changing it. But there's like four parks here in Florida. Okay. Animal Kingdom. Okay. Epcot. Okay. Magic, Magic Kingdom, Kingdom. And this Disney Hollywood, Hollywood Studios. Okay. Yeah. Disney Hollywood Studios is actually this really great, like, little kitschy 50s bar feeling. Um, and they've got some really cute drinks in there, but you got to like go down that first um, street, and then it's like kind of tucked away on the left, cause it, so it kind of feels a little bit more hidden, or it's like in the back lot area, like hidden. But you know, it does feel kind of more like Shh, don't you don't you're not allowed to drink here. <laughs> um, and Magic Kingdom, I don't think you're allowed to drink at at all. Well, Disneyland, you're not allowed to drink at at all, yeah. so that wouldn't surprise me. And I haven't been to Magic Kingdom here because. Apparently, it's very similar to Disneyland. Bigger. But we used to sneak it in and then get the lemonade slushies, which are still my favorite thing. How did you sneak it in? They check your bags. They check your bags, but they don't check your bra. (laughs) That's right. You you use your bra as a purse. Yeah, you noticed that. I put my credit card (laughs) in the side of my bra. I have so much stuff in my bra right now. I have room keys, and I have feminine products, and I have all kinds of stuff tucked into my bra. (laughs) And so in the same areas where I hide those things, you, you... Little little, nips. Yeah, little vodka things. And especially, this works the best in the winter because you can wear a sweatshirt. Mm, So, I mean, right now, I'm wearing a tank top, so you could probably see all the nips underneath my arms. You could get one nip right right in the middle. (laughs) And just like, right, yeah. If if your your (laughs) neckline is high enough, you can get one right in the middle. Exactly. But that's all you can do in a tank top. In a sweatshirt, Oh, you tighten that thing up pretty good. You can get it all the way around. And then you just pass them out once you get in, put them in the bags, and you're good to go. And then, like, you don't want to get caught either, so it has yeah. to be in something. And I love those lemonades, or at least I used to. Yeah. I'm really disappointed with the way they changed the lemonade. When I was a kid, it was the fresh kind. Now mm-hmm. it's that stupid machine stuff that's filled with sugar. Um, so I don't get them anymore, but when I, was ki- when I was a kid. But they all have Starbucks in there. I mean, you can do, like... They have Starbucks now? I'm so disappointed. Well, they do. But it's good because you can get, like, the, the, the tea drinks that are, like, the cooler ones. Yeah, I bet some work. of those hibiscus teas would be great with a little bit of extra added in. <laughs> Probably. Right? Probably, yeah. So the reason that, for me, that drinking such a big thing at Disney, you know, is it's really hard to find good beer on Disney property. Yeah. You know, there, we, we talked very briefly about the fact that... Um, you know, there is a time and a place, but if you're coming down to Florida, 
my husband and I are beer geeks. Mm. You know, when we go down to a tropical island, we'll drink whatever's local. Normally local is very similar to a Corona, but it's right for that area. We yeah. know that here in Florida, we have Cigar City, Funky Buddha. There's also Orlando Brewing Company. We actually went there and spent, we had the longest game of Uno ever. <laughs> At Orlando Brewing Company on our honeymoon. And it was, like, the only brewery around, like, this area at the time. But now, like, when we come down, we know all these beers are here. And you can, there's actually apps where you can, like, go and find out, like, where you can get Cigar City beer. Nice. Yeah. I can't remember. It's something about... Does the, the app tell you where you can get bacon beer? Maybe. They would tell you, <laughs> and I'd be able to tell you if it was a bacon beer. But, yeah, it's a very, like... It's a thing now. People yeah. want to know where they can get all kinds of beer. Because even when you're drinking around, you know, you go to uh, each of the countries and they have a beer from that country there. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's why drinking around the world is actually a thing is because, you know, you go to Canada, there's Canadian beer, which isn't hard to do. But you go to, you know, um, Italy and France and uh, Norway mm. and the Moroccan beer was actually out the day that we went so oh, we had to go back and get a Moroccan beer on a different trip just to make up for the fact that we didn't have it before oh how funny yeah I'm gonna have to prepare my liver for Monday huh <laughs> uh, yes and I I told you before I am completely and totally jealous of you going into the park and yeah drinking your way around I'm Epcot. excited for it yeah it'll be good and I'm glad we didn't do it when I was a kid because I don't think that I would have gotten you wouldn't have appreciated the same like no. a kid that's doing it and we're using the term kid meaning 21 plus but basically 21. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going I with mean, the yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, because when you're over 21, you always sneak in alcohol to this <laughs> No, but I mean we're talking about drinking around the world though. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. you're over 21 and that's I mean there's two different ways to drink in an amusement park. You can do it the shady way that I did it when we were like 18. And you have to do that way at yeah. Disneyland and Magic Kingdom. No matter what. Right. And, but as an adult, like, why would I bother? Right. You know, it's almost, it would be, I don't know, it's just a stupid kid thing to do. It's just the fact that you're doing something wrong is half the fun. Right. Where now I can go and legit, like, one of the cool things about Epcot is they do have all these different things around the world. And it's a, it's a completely different experience. So it's like I've drank in amusement parks but it's completely separate yeah you know it's, it's a thing yeah it's a thing and beer is damn near impossible in disneyland and magic kingdom because how do you sneak that in no you can't you can't you can't do it i feel like maybe possibly potentially but probably not you can actually drink at be our guest which is a new restaurant in the new fantasy land at magic kingdom but i don't know that it's accurate i just feel like i heard it this one time yeah, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I'll have to. I would just like to say a quick shout out to my podcast editor, John. And Justin writes my show notes and he's lovely. Justin, can you please go and fact check me and let me know, can we actually get alcohol at Be Our <laughs> Guest? Uh, make sure you go head over to the show notes to find out what the verdict is. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can check out Anaheim. Yeah. In August, too. And see right. if they've added anything. Because it's we, been years. We can totally, like, you know what? If I get myself out to Anaheim, I'm going to put on my harness. All right. And we're making a date of just going and drinking in the park. Oh, my God, we right? are. Yes. We'll right. do, well, if you can. Because, like I said, last time I went to Magic King, like, the Disneyland in Anaheim, there was no way to do it on the up and up. It was only California Adventure. We can do California Adventure. I mean, we can do the park hopper. And the downtown Disney thing. Downtown Disney, like, you don't even need to pay to get in there. Right. We can but go wild saying, in there. We can, we can do up Disney and drinking together yeah. in California. Oh, you're coming to Anaheim. You just need to talk to my boss. Done. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Yes. I'm a client. <laughs> like, I need Amanda there. Like, she needs to come. Yes. Done. No, client we're doing relations. This. Yes. We're going to have a whole group. Yes, you need to go. It's, I know. It's a podcast convention at Disneyland. I know. Who, who else but me? Yeah, you right? need to go. Yeah. So it's, it's this whole thing. And if anybody has any tips for how to find the best beers at Disney, we haven't even gotten into all of the restaurants that are on the monorail system. You can you can literally monorail hop through the resorts and get different beers. So which many. Is, yeah. But that's a... 
thing for another uh, another time because we are at a podcast conference and we have a lot to do. So we actually have a date in just a little bit yes. to go drink more beer. Yeah, we have a happy hour we have to go to. It's a really tough time we're having here I know, at PodFest. You know, it's been raining nonstop and it's just been so sad. It stopped. I know. <laughs> Shh. 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 It's raining, guys. We have to. We have to go. It, we're right. so wet. We have to leave. <laughs> we have to leave this inside space because <laughs> it was ridiculous. We went outside. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to round three really quickly. Uh, round three is your first beer memory. My Give first me. beer memory. I was sitting next to a creek in my my weird town. We have these flood channels. They're not really creeks. We're sitting next to the flood channel. And I was given a beer, wasn't allowed to drink it, obviously. I was like 14. <laughs> and I tasted it. It was a straight Budweiser. And I thought it was disgusting. And I said I was never drinking this again, which was obviously a lie. <laughs> but um, yeah, I had the peer pressure. And then I said I don't like it. And I didn't really drink much after that. I mean, it was a couple of years before I got started, like normal time. Yeah. Like, you know, 17, 18. But yeah, I thought it was really gross. Uh, I, I hear that. I'm gl- so glad that so I have this philosophy that women don't, not as many women, I'm not saying, because as a woman that loves beer, I'm not saying like women don't drink beer, but I think that not as many women do because way back when in your lifetime, you know, like you tried a really crappy beer yeah. and we are smart enough to be like, oh, heck no, I'm never doing that again. Yeah. But beer is so much different than just that one first sip that you had. Well, and I think it is an acquired taste. I disagree. Really? You I loved your first beer. Not that one. That was not my gateway beer. I think you have to find your beer. See, I feel like I didn't really drink a lot of beer until college, and it was all about the drinking games. And I drank so much beer that I started to like it. Okay, so I did those drinking games, too. It's an immature way of getting into it. But. Right, I did those drinking games, too, and I could swallow it down. But it was never a like until I found Shipyard Pumpkinhead was my gateway beer. And it had so much flavor. It's way too sweet for my palate now. Mm. But I still drink it every fall, like, mixed with some stout because I just, I'm, I'm such a cheese ball that I just have <laughs> to, like, the nostalgia of everything. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, like, that, until it was that beer... I really, I really just didn't make the leap. I I drink it because like other people, this is what they had at their house. I'm like, all right, but it was never like, mm, can I have another one, please? This is the basic. Yeah, it was. You have to find that one beer that really speaks to you, and then you're just like, oh, it's not an acquired taste. I just love this beer, and then once you get that beer, then your taste buds are just like, oh, let's just try all. Yeah, the let's beers. do this some more. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of people are either wine people or beer people. And women are supposed to drink wine for some reason. I don't know. And I don't really like wine. In fact, my body just rejects it. And so that kind of makes me a, a beer drinker. But I do see, like, most of my friends that drink wine, they drink wine and that's it. And most of us that drink beer, we kind of drink beer and that's it. Yeah. It's funny how that happens. Yeah, I kind of like to have all the beverages. But the one thing I normally try to do to get, like, people into beer is to actually be like, what flavors does your mouth like currently? Yeah. If you like a white wine, there's a beer for that. That's true. I have a friend that owns a sour beer brewery, and it's going bananas up in yeah. the um, the Bay Area. It's called the Rare Barrel. Wait, you're friends with them? Um, we're actually more like family. <laughs> Can you just give them my address and have them just send me swag in the form of beer all the time? I'll send you stuff. Yeah, that's super yes. easy. Yeah, yeah. The rare, it's amazing. And that's that's the thing. Like, my wine-drinking friends, would they? I bring them to the Rare Barrel, and they always love it. Yeah. You know, it's it's a great... And my favorite beer is actually a raspberry beer that I had in Portland. I can't remember which brewery it was. But that's a really good point. It's like, if you have a flavor, there's a beer for it. Exactly. You know, I don't think you can do that with wine. There's no bacon wine. If there is, it'd be really weird. And probably disgusting. Uh, you probably. Let's move on to round four. All right. Round four, generally speaking, is random questions, you know, and I have these cards, but we're at a podcast conference and I've got like all the bags and I can't (laughs) find the cards anywhere. So random question, normally I have little cards, I don't have them. The boss is saying we need to get to our happy hour. Well, should we just go to the happy hour then? Let's do it. I have one question for you. Sure. Okay. It's not going to be completely random this time because we've been talking about Disney, but what character are you? What Disney character 
Ooh. is your Disney character? Ariel. Yeah? Definitely Ariel. I love being in the ocean. I love being in the pool. I remember being a kid, and I would be in the swimming pool, and I would look at my reflection at the bottom of the pool, and I'd make my hair move so it looked like Ariel's. Like, I was all about her. I wish I could sing like her. I pretend that I can at karaoke bars, but, like, no. But I, I fake it really well. I just love her, you know? I love that she wanted to, like, she wanted to be out of the ocean, and so she sacrificed whatever she had to and, like, made it happen. Like, she makes her dreams come true, and I just love, I love Ariel. So Wonderful. Yeah. I agree. I'm a, I'm an Ariel. What's yours? I, 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 I would say Ariel. So for Really? Tinker, Tinkerbell is very high up there because I like that little feisty attitude she yeah. has. And wings with pom-poms on your shoes? Pretty stellar. Yeah. But no, Ariel, I have a huge connection to. My dad and I always have had like a really strange relationship. He never really wanted kids and he especially never really wanted girls. Mm. Uh, we have found peace, so nobody feels sorry for me. We have like come to a place where... You know, he's he said, I'm proud of you. And oh. I was just like, oh. But, you know, it's always been kind of strained. Yeah. And so that right at the end of the movie, she waves goodbye to her dad. And it's just like, I cried. I was a, I was a kid. And we watched it in the theater, my mom and my cousins and aunts and stuff. And I was crying as a kid watching Ariel. And... I own the CD. I have a van named Ursula. That's amazing. <laughs> I have a hard time driving a minivan. Like, I have owned this minivan for two years now, and I have not come to grips with it. It's big, bulbous, evil, and I named her Ursula. Yeah. Yeah. It's fitting. Yeah. And I have the CD. We pop that in there. Poor unfortunate souls. I belt that out to the kids. And then oh, I'm yeah. just like, woo. And my daughter, the five-year-old, she's in the back. And she, like, makes all the Ariel faces that would go along with it. Nice. Yeah. I like your style. Yeah. I was on a road trip with my sister and my brother-in-law. We are adults. We were wine tasting. <laughs> and um, We were adults. Oh, Let's just very, put that out there. There was not a child anywhere near us. And we put on the Little Mermaid soundtrack, and Mike and I went wild, just singing at the top of our lungs while my poor sister and husband, oh, yeah. You know, like, part of your world, the music. It's so good. And my sister and my husband were just sitting there like, we've married crazy people. (laughs) These people are out of their minds. We still do all the words. Now he has kids, which is great. You know, that's how it should be. I still do this. And I'm 34 and childless. But it's, the music is good, and... How do you not love it? Right? I dance down the middle of Main Street. I have kids, but most parents don't just break out in pirouettes down Main Street. But that's the thing about Disneyland. (laughs) It's one of the only, like, if you were to do that in the mall, you're a crazy person. If you do it in Disneyland, you're just in the the right mood. You're in the spirit. It transforms you back to a time when you were a kid. We all need those places. And Disneyland is that place for so many of us. It's the only place where I feel... Like, I can really behave like a child, and it's fine. I had the best day yesterday. We're going to end on this story, and then you're going to tell us where to find you. But this is the last story because we have got to go drink more. Okay. (laughs) Yesterday was almost the perfect day. Now, I love my children and my husband, and I wish they could have been part of the entire day with me, but it would have been different. Um, I wouldn't have been able to let my freak flag fly completely. And the only other part that was missing was Johnny Cash. But my day started out with three hours in Disney, five hours beering, and then, like, another three hours geeking out about podcasting. Nice. It was the best day. You know, I wish I could have shared that with my kids, but they wouldn't have got as much out of it. It was just like, you know, I just was like, ha. That's like a you day. It was. That's amazing. It was like. If Johnny Cash had been sprinkled in there just a little bit, it would have been like me in day form. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Well, congratulations on having such a great day. Thank you so much. Yeah. Life needs those days. Yeah. Right? Adulting. Overrated. Yeah. That's Disney beer and podcast. Absolutely. That sounds like a great day. Wonderful. Remind all the listeners where they can find you because you are lovely. It was so wonderful, like, meeting you in the flesh. Yeah. And I feel like... We are friends. We're we both are. Ariels. Yeah. Yeah. So this is happening. And yeah. I am happy that it did. Perfect. Yeah. So what do I do? What's my podcast? My I'm... podcast is Congressional Dish. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who am I? What is and it? And blank. Yeah. My podcast is Congressional Dish. It's not as boring as it sounds because there's a lot going on. 
And I'm just as goofy on air on my own show as I am on this one. You know, you got to laugh at this stuff. So, yeah, it's Congressional Dish. You can find it wherever podcasts are found and on congressionaldish.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I can't wait for all of our adventures because this has just got to keep going on. Oh, totally. But you're coming up to Maine this summer, right? Uh, actually, might be coming to Boston, so... Close enough. Day see. trip it. Yeah, it's not that far. All right. We'll see you all soon. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. A huge thank you to Jen Briney for chatting, drinking, and talking Disney with me. No matter what side of the party lines you sit on, if you are political in any way, be sure to check her out. You can find links in our show notes over at greatbeeradventure.com slash podcast. I will see you next week with another installment from New York. Until then, get out there and try something new. Chat soon, friends. If you all, our fabulous co-adventurers, would like to support the show, check out our Patreon page. For less than the cost of a beer, you can show us some love. Go to greatbeeradventure.com slash support. If you want to see even more from our adventures, follow us on Instagram at Great Beer Adventure. And be sure to subscribe to the show. That way, you won't miss a thing. Great Beer Adventure is part of the Great Pint Society. Cheers. Cheers.